It's always appropriate to have a friar preach on treasure. Um, <laughs> so I don't have a lot to say. I don't have a lot of treasure. I was thinking about that. Yeah, I just, obviously as a friar, I don't have a lot of treasure. But even in that, I like every year, one of the advantages of being transferred and being moved is you can get rid of stuff. So, you know, every year, every few years when I've been moved recently, you just kind of go through stuff and just get rid of it. So this treasure that we try to maintain or try to build just doesn't work very well. I'm also not a, this, yeah, I'm not a very sentimental, like things don't matter a lot to me. So like just collecting a bunch of things isn't something that's that important to me. My mother recently was going through, they had moved some of their storage and they found these big boxes and they were things of mine that I had growing up and just mementos, things from high school, diplomas, these kinds of things. And she goes, you know, Dave, how do you want us to mail this to you? How do you want me to get this to you? And I said, I don't. And she goes, well, I can't just throw it away. It's like, well, it looks like that's your issue then, Mom. So you're either going to hold on to it for, I don't know, or you're going to throw it away because I don't want it. And she said, but it's really important. I said, it might be important to you. It's not as important to me. So, But I was thinking about that. What is those treasures, those things that are important to me? Because there are some things. One of them is an orange blanket. It sounds really kind of crazy. Um, I've mentioned time over the years that my mom's got MS. And one of the things that she did for each of us kids is there was uh, some times when she was doing better that my mom could crochet, and she would crochet. And she would go through these phases of crocheting scarves and all these kinds of things for us. And with each one of the kids, she provided us an opportunity. She said, you go pick out the yarn, and I'll make you an afghan. So... It was 1970, would have been about 1977, 78, when the Denver Broncos were at the peak, right? And went to the Super Bowl that year, they lost. They also went the next year, and they lost. They went four times, and they lost. But I'm over that. The Lord has healed me last night. He intervened in that, right? But uh, so I went, and I got this orange yarn. It's just ugly, just awful orange yarn. I said, Mom, that's what I want my afghan. She goes, are you serious? It's like, it glows at night, right? But my mom, there was an act of love. I mean, there were times that she would have to be able to put it aside and not be able to pick it up because of her MS for months, sometimes years. And so there's this orange afghan that's in my friary that, that I hope that, that moths don't get in that about that. Because my father was a, an athlete at Notre Dame, and he was a monogram member, and, and I got my dad's jacket, his monogram jacket that he got from Notre Dame. That's, that's pretty special. I would rather that moths not go in there. Ruin that. The other thing I was thinking is there's a small, I've got a small, it's a little oil lamp that I've had since I've been ordained. It sits next to my chair my, where I pray and late at night, hundreds of times over the thousands of times over the years. I lit that lamp and just sat and was quiet and be still. That's pretty, that's that's pretty special. That's a treasure, I suppose. But I found myself reflecting and praying like where your treasure is, that there your heart will be. Store not up in treasures on earth, but, but treasures in heaven. I spent the last couple of days praying about that and thinking about that. What does that look like? What is this, this treasure in heaven that we're supposed to store up? And the Lord gave me three images as I was praying through that. Kind of these three storage rooms, I suppose, treasure rooms. The first one that he brought me into I looked around, and in, in, in it, there were all the things of, of prayer, and mass, and Eucharist. And I just found myself in that room just, just taking up and, and holding these things, the, the Scripture, preparing this, preparing, praying through the Scriptures as I'm preparing for Mass. That's a treasure that we should probably try to store up. I was just, as I was praying, and, and again in this room, it was, it was the various monstrances over the last, I don't know, 30 years, 35 years that I've sat and kneeled and prayed in front of. Those, those images. It was, it was, you know, some of the, the hosts that you can get that are stamped, right? They've got like the Lamb of God. I, I think it's all kind of cheesy myself. That's just a personal opinion, right? And the other people, it's like, oh, I want that one. I want this one. This one's so, so. But this, all these different hosts that that we've been able to consecrate or receive over the years were a part of this treasure. There was a rosary there. 
of the tabernacles. There was this little candle, this oil lamp that I spoke of. This place of prayer. In the Eucharist, in adoration. I remember when I was transferred one time, somebody came up to me and they said, I can't believe you're being transferred. That must be so difficult. What are you going to do? And, and it just struck me that they were much more concerned about it than I was. And I said to them, my provincial, he didn't, he didn't say I have to quit praying. He didn't say that I couldn't have Eucharistic adoration anymore. He didn't say that I couldn't celebrate Mass. He just asked me to do that somewhere different, in a different place. But those things, all of those things, the Word and, and adoration and prayer and Eucharist, that all goes wherever. Brothers, it seems to me, at the heart of this treasure has got to be this. It's, it's, it's got to be prayer. It's got to be the spiritual life. It's got to be Eucharist. And, and I don't know what your life is like, but as a priest especially, I can't imagine you not celebrating Mass every day. Like, like when I look at my day, there's a few things that I know. There's actually one thing that I know that I'm going to do. I'm going to have Mass and I'm going to pray. And that's the only thing, honestly, that I know for sure in any given day. But if the Scripture says, store up treasure, and it seems to me this is the place that we store that up. Amen? Amen. So the second room, as I was praying, that the Lord brought me into, again, these, this, like these treasury rooms. I don't know how I can exactly explain what I was seeing, what I was experiencing, but... But the second room, I walk in, and there was cross. The cross was there. It was just kind of this room, and the cross was there. It's the stumbling block to those who do not believe. But to those who believe, it's the glory of God. Right? This, this, this treasure in heaven. And, and it seems to me that there's something profoundly beautiful about this conversion that takes place in our life, that, that the cross is no longer something we do everything we can to get away from or resist, but we actually come to the place that it's our treasure. At the, tro at the cross, as I was praying through this, the, this image was our Blessed Mother and, and John. Those who were faithful that were at the cross, my treasure. But in this room with this, with this booty and the treasure and all of that, there was, there was faces and memories of the cross. There were tombstones, funerals, words like cancer, Divorce, isolation, and this place of, of, of all of the suffering, the desert, right? All, all of the things, and, and the more, uh, some of you are going to, the older I get, right? And I hate, I promised I would never say that, right? But the older I get, it always brings us back there. It always brings us back there. Talking to my mom recently, who's obviously lost her son and her husband in the last 13 months, and, and she's saying, I didn't think the end would be like this. Right? Having things taken away from her, and independence, and she goes, I just didn't think it was going to be so hard at the end. But isn't, isn't that, if we can begin to see that that's the treasure, right, that that there's a way of encountering and engaging Jesus the, there at that place. There's a, a quote by Yves Congar. He said, there are places in our heart that don't exist and into which suffering must enter so that they may. That in the midst of the cross, in the midst of that, that room surrounding and, and filled with all of these, that Jesus reveals himself to us there. It becomes our treasure. I mean, it seems to me that, that we handle desolation and we handle suffering and we handle the desert and we handle the cross profoundly different if we in fact see that that's our treasure there. It's our treasure. We ought not feel like, well, I just want to get more and more of that treasure, right? Because the cross life has enough suffering. We don't have to go looking for it. It'll find us. Right? It'll find us. Especially, especially if we're willing to minister in vulnerability, that we actually enter into the people that we minister, if we enter into their suffering and their brokenness and their shame, we, we're not afraid of going and being a part of that. And, and, and the grace and the beauty is that, that God actually transforms that and it becomes for us. Right? It becomes for us that treasure. Amen? So the third room, that, that since this third place that the Lord brought me into, it, 
it was what I imagined uh, the tomb of Jesus looked like. And there was a stone that was rolled away, and, and there was a woman there who I imagined was Mary Magdalene. And, and I, one of the things I love about Pope Francis is that he made her, her day a feast day. I think actually, actually a solemnity now. There's something profoundly beautiful about Mary Magdalene, who at the death of Jesus, all she wanted to be was where he was. So she goes to the tomb early in the morning. So the image that the Lord brought me to, the third image, was, was there, and Mary Magdalene was there, and the stone was thrown away. And, and there was this, this light, just this illuminating light coming from this tomb, right? And I walked in, and it was so light that, that it was hard to see anything, and it was hard to recognize, but I become accustomed to that light, and I began to see, and I was looking around this tomb that I expected to be empty, but it was all the things from the other treasuries. It was all the things of the liturgy and the Eucharist and the Mass and the Adoration and the hosts and the scriptures and the rosaries. It was all of these things. The little candle that I prayed next to for 30 years was there, and it was, it was the cross and it was the tombs and it was the words and it was the diagnosis and it was all of that was now taken into this light that was an empty tomb which is my treasure, which is exactly what we're all rooting for, right? Isn't this ultimately what we desire is that the Lord would bring us to this place where, where all of the brokenness and the, and the struggle and the sinfulness and stuff is all taken up into Christ and the power of death and the power of hell and the power of the cross is broken. There's no more power over us. That, brothers, is the place of our treasure. What the Lord was saying is these, these things while on earth are ultimately going to be what are going to take each one of us to our tomb, to that empty tomb, to that place of final victory, the place of final glory. Because what was different about this last one was, was the, first, the first treasury, the second treasury, they were all contained, but the third, there was the sense of movement through this to the glory of God where we encounter the one who has saved and rescued and redeemed us. Brothers, let us be careful and cautious about gaining treasure on earth so as to be able to merit treasure in heaven. Amen?